Hi, I'm Susan Kennedy of Pretty Peaceful, and today I'm out here in the Aspen Grove behind my backyard to show you a new kind of wrap I just finished I'm calling the Wedge. And it's designed for one skein of Karen Colorama Halo Perfect Phasing Yarn, or Karen Colorama Ogo Yarn, which is this bulky weight, really beautiful gradient. And I don't know if you could tell, but I really love this yarn. <laughs> made several videos in a row. Uh, using this uh, yarn just because it's so soft and comfy. I love it. So this um, The wedge this little wrap here is designed to use one cake exactly So here's what it looks like all together. It starts at this very small point And you crochet toward the wider end here. So it makes this beautiful wedge shape and the name is not only inspired by the shape of the, the shawl, but it's also inspired by um, a song by one of my favorite jam bands, Fish, called The Wedge. <laughs> yeah, this just got really great lyrics, kind of about the interconnectedness of all of life, of, you know, the, the ocean and the salt in our tears, and just very poetic. And I think that song is named for a place in um, Utah called The Wedge, which is like the Little Grand Canyon. Um, it overlooks the Little Grand Canyon, which is the San Rafael River in, U in Utah, not far from here where I live in the Four Corners in the Colorado corner. So just a really fun wedge shape. It's just a different shape to crochet. I love a rectangular wrap and I make those a lot and I wear those a lot, but this is just a little change, a little something different here. So it's designed to use exactly one skein of Karen Colorama Halo. That is a bulky weight yarn. It's 481 yards or 440 meters per 227 grams. This is the Orchid Frost colorway. And I wanted to show you another colorway that I just got that's really beautiful. And I already did a little test on this one. <laughs> this one is the Graphite Frost colorway. Really pretty. So the hook size for this one, I used a 10 millimeter hook, my Susan Bates hook here. That is a US N15. And if 10 millimeter hook is too big for you, you can always go down. It makes this nice big lacy spaces between the stitches. For this little sample here, I used a nine millimeter hook and you can see it's a little bit tighter, a little bit stiffer of fabric. So for me, after testing the two hook sizes, I decided to go with 10. And if you want to size down to nine or even eight, that's great. <laughs> so the construction on this is really simple. It is all double crochet stitches in US terms. And you start at the center of the cake right down here at this point with just one double crochet stitch in the first row. Then in row two, you work two double crochet stitches into that stitch. So row two has two stitches. In row three, you work two double crochet stitches into the first stitch, and then just double crochet into the rest of the stitches, which is only one. So you end up with three. And then row four, you just two double crochet into the first stitch, crochet across. And that's how all the rest of the rows go you just work two double crochet stitches into that first stitch and then one double crochet all the way across. So I got 73 rows out of my cake and you may get 72 or 74 depending on how big your cake is. So after row 73 here, I had 73 stitches in the row because each row you're just adding one more stitch right at the beginning of the row. And so that's how the edges look and I'll show you how to get started like the first 10 rows or so here. So it's just really fun, a fun way to crochet. It just gets bigger and bigger until you run out of yarn and the cake there. And you can wear this in a lot of ways. So I've been kind of playing around with it. I like to just put it over my shoulders like that and take the wide end and tuck that over my shoulder, drape this one over that shoulder. So we have kind of this ombre drape in the front. And then I take that little tail end, just kind of throw that over my other shoulder so you have kind of a asymmetric shawl with just like that little tail hanging down. For another look, you can put the wide end of the wrap up over your shoulders like that, and then take this end and wrap it around. A little bit of a different look, and you can see kind of more of the ombre up by your neck. You know, adjust it around. That one didn't turn out quite that cute. Or you can kind of make a hood if you got wind going on and you want your ears covered. Just 
put the wide end around your neck like that and you can wrap the other end around have that tail hanging down in front or pull the hood off and just really kind of build whatever you want out of this very versatile and gonna keep your neck warm for sure <laughs> but usually I think the way I'm gonna be wearing it is just throwing it over my shoulders like a scarf and then pulling one side across to kind of keep this area warm because <laughs> the older I get the colder I get here so I just really want to wrap sometimes and then just throwing this one over my shoulder like that so we have that little tail hanging down on the back <laughs> so the wedge just a little something different for one cake and I'll show you how to get started okay let's get started so I'm using Karen Colorama Halo perfect phasing yarn and a 10 millimeter hook and feel free to use any yarn you like and go up about three to four millimeters on your hook size to just give it a nice lacy drape. So I'm going up four millimeters here. We're going to start with a slip knot and put our yarn on the hook. And then we'll chain three. And we're going to double crochet into that first chain we made, which is the third chain from the hook. So here's row one. It's only going to have just that chain three and this double crochet here. So we are not gonna count those chains, we're just gonna count this one double crochet stitch we made. Now we'll turn our work and start row two. So this whole wrap is made of double crochet stitches in US terms, and you can make the first double crochet however you want. So you can either chain three, and that will count as your first stitch from now on, from row two to the rest of the rows, or you can, um, do a chainless starting double crochet or chainless standing double crochet. So I'm going to show you what that looks like because that's my preferred method here. And I learned this from Tamara Kelly at mooglyblog.com. You pull up a loop that's about the same height as a double crochet stitch. And what we're going to do is make a double crochet stitch kind of out of thin air here. That's easier to crochet into when we come back to crochet into the stitch in the next row. So you pull up a loop, you put your finger on top of it a little bit, Wrap the yarn around the hook like that. Put the hook into that first stitch, the one stitch from row one. Yarn over and pull through the hook. And now we kind of have like three loops on the hook here, just like a regular double crochet stitch. So we're gonna yarn over and pull through two of the loops and then yarn over and pull through two more loops. So now we made this stitch here. It looks just like a regular double crochet. It's got that nice V on the top there, so it'll be easy to crochet into in the next row. So either chain three or do that chainless starting double crochet, and I'll show you how to do it again in the next row. Okay, then one more stitch here for row two. We're just gonna double crochet into that same stitch. So yarn over the hook, into the stitch, yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. So that's row two. We've got these two double crochet stitches here. So we'll turn our work and start row three. So to start the row, you can either chain three and that'll count as your first stitch or do this chainless starting stitch. Pull up a loop, put your finger down to hold it, wrap the yarn around the hook like that, put the hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two loops. That's our chainless starting double crochet or standing double crochet. Now we're gonna work another stitch into that same stitch, one double crochet stitch, and then one double crochet stitch into our next, our, our, our last stitch. That's really that chainless starting double crochet or the chain three from your previous row. So if you change three there, make sure you get into the top of that chain three. So that was row three and we have one, two, three stitches. We're, start, we're counting that starting double crochet or that starting chain three as a stitch. So now we'll start row four, either chain three or do the chainless starting double crochet or chainless standing double crochet. It goes by both names. My yarn got tangled around a little <laughs> branch over here, sitting on a log to show you how to do this. Okay, so we got our first stitch. Now we're gonna make another double crochet into that same stitch. And then work one double crochet into the next two stitches to finish row four. So 
So that was row four and we have four stitches. So for the whole rest of the, the wedge, the pattern is you're going to turn your work, either chain three or do a chainless starting double crochet. This really does help keep your edges nice and straight. Then you're going to work another double crochet into that same stitch. So the first, working into that first stitch, we're always working two here. And then we work just one double crochet into each stitch across. So every row we're adding one, oops, every row we're adding one stitch. So by row 73, we'll have 73 double crochet stitches across the row. So it's just like regular double crochet back and forth in rows, like you're making a blanket or something. But we are working the equivalent of two stitches into this first stitch. You're starting double crochet or chain three, and then one regular double crochet into that same stitch. And then double crochet in each stitch across. So the rows go really fast in the beginning because, you know, you only have like five stitches in a row here. <laughs> and when you get to the lighter color of the cake, like row 70, and so it'll take, take a little bit longer on each row, but turn your work, do the chain three or this chainless starting double crochet. And if you have another method you like to use to start your double crochet rows, feel free to use any method. I saw Donna Wolf at Nastasia.com. She had just posted a really fun way to start a double crochet row where you kind of make one single crochet stitch and then another single crochet stitch right on top of that, working into like the side of the first single crochet stitch. So that's kind of interesting and I tested it out, but um, I, I think I prefer the, the chainless starting double crochet here. So I'll show you one more time. We're pulling up a loop, stick your finger on top of it, wrap the yarn around the hook and insert it into the stitch, yarn over, pull it through, Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. And then work another double crochet into that same stitch. And then just double crochet across. So nice and easy. You can get kind of meditative with it, not have to pay attention. All you have to do is increase by one stitch per row. And right in that first stitch, work two stitches. And make sure your last stitch goes into the right spot, either that chain three that started your row or work, working into this chainless starting double crochet. So I hope you enjoy your wedge and as always thank you for watching.